Zi Chow from Hanoi. We've just flown in on Bamboo Airlines. Um, it was a great flight. Yuan is going to do a review of that airline, so please be on the lookout for that. We've never been to Hanoi. We've got two days here and we are very much looking forward to exploring this great city. Took a grab to our hotel, which is in a fabulous location near the old quarter. We decided to go for a walk and orientate ourselves and came across a vibrant street scene with street performers everywhere. Tomorrow we'll start our exploration of Hanoi and we're very excited about our food tour that we've booked for tomorrow night. Talking about food, Ewan of course got hungry so I had to feed him before that heading again. off to bed. Um, it was surprisingly hot. Lettuce is not much of an insulator. Very good. We're now at the famous Huan Kiem Lake, hopefully I've pronounced it correctly. Um, it's also known as the Lake of the Returned Sword. The story goes that a fisherman pulled out a sword from his fishing net and gave it to Li Lao, sorry, momentary lapse, Li Lao, who used it to fight against the Chinese. He was victorious and then became emperor. He then returned the sword uh, back to the lake and a giant turtle took the sword and returned it to <laughs> returned it to uh, its god, its place of origin, which is why the lake is now called the Return of the Sword. We're about to head into the Jade Temple. It's not expensive and well worth the visit, only about 30,000 dong. We cross the beautiful and elegant Vermilion Bridge. The temple itself is quiet and serene, even with the number of people that were visiting. The temple was built in the 19th century and was dedicated to the General Trang Hong Duao, again, pardon my um, pronunciation, who defeated the Mongols in the 13th century. Unfortunately, we weren't able to film inside, but you get a great glimpse of how beautiful it is and all of the offerings to the different deities. Again, beautiful vermilion and gold. It's just exquisite. There were turtles in the lake until 2016. Unfortunately, they're extinct now, but you can see two turtles that have been taxidermied that actually lived in the lake. Well, it's coffee time and it is time to try Hanoi's famous egg coffee. And we are going to try it again at a very famous coffee spot, the Note Cafe. They're renowned for their egg coffee and their coconut coffee. So let's go and try it out. We've ordered our coffee, we've got ourselves an egg coffee and a iced coconut coffee um, at the Note Cafe and you'll see everywhere there are notes and post-its and that's what it's famous for. People will you know, write little notes and put them on the wall or wherever they can. Um, and it only came to $95,000. I'll leave you guys to convert it in whatever currency you have. I thought I'd take a moment while we're here and have been walking around to um, talk to you about the absolute must-haves um, or my absolute must-haves when traveling in a hot environment or when you know that you're going to do a lot of exercise. So my lovely cameraman is going to pan through to my lovely setup. So of course, first off, water, water bottle and hydrolyte. I always stick in a tablet of hydrolyte whenever I fill up my water bottle just because when it's hot you sweat a lot and it makes such a huge difference um, over just having water. You really feel hydrated, you don't get that headache and whatnot. Whatever sort of spray mist to cool you down, absolutely fantastic. And of course sunscreen, sunblock. Can't go anywhere without that. Um, I like the mist just because it's really easy to apply and this one smells yummy. 
So that is absolute must have travel um, accessories for a day um, to make sure that you're well hydrated, you're cool and you don't get sunburned. Now, coffee came really, really fast. So again, lovely cameraman's going to pan to the egg coffee, which is hot, and the iced coconut coffee. So I'm going to try the iced coconut coffee. I think this is going to be my favorite because I love an iced coffee. Mm, really yummy. Um, nice. I can't say it's hugely coconutty, but it's very refreshing and very nice. I think this is my coffee. Now the egg coffee was created, I think, during the war. Um, because they just didn't have access to milk so it's basically just egg that's been whipped up with condensed milk and sugar so if you're diabetic this might not be quite the right thing to have um, but apparently it's absolutely beautiful so here it goes Actually, that's really nice. It's hot, but it does, it tastes kind of like coffee with marshmallows. Yeah, well, you might have to order his own. So we're standing now in front of St. Joseph's Cathedral. As you can see, it's very European looking in the neo-gothic style was built in 1886 for a vibrant Catholic community as you can imagine the French were here so here is St. Joseph's Cathedral in front of the beautiful Hanoi Opera House if you think it looks sort of familiar and you've been to Paris you're right it's uh, built uh, after the Garnier Opera House in Paris it was built in 1901 and is a big symbol of the French Quarter here in Hanoi. As you know, Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia were part of Indochina and a French protectorate until 1954, where after a battle with um, Ho Chi Minh, the country was divided into two. The North um, became communist with Ho Chi Minh and the South, as we know, uh, fell mostly under the American influence and leading up to that war uh, that is known here as the American War and we know it as the Vietnam War. It has been absolutely amazing walking through um, today through the Old Quarter and the French Quarter and tomorrow we plan to do uh, the Hanoi Hilton and a few other places. But we're so looking forward to our food tour tonight which we booked through the website with locals. We love meeting local people and having them share their insights and love of their cities. Trang, our guide tonight, is a former journalist and she'll be introducing us to some of Hanoi's delicacies and her favorite food spots. So Trang has beautifully um, introduced us to a sticky rice dish that is only available in autumn. In autumn. In autumn. Um, because it is a time when the green rice is um, harvested, which is right here, um, and it's got to be green, and it's, it's the sticky rice that they have. Now this dish, um, I'll show it to you. So it's green sticky rice with, um, these are lotus um, flowers and green beans with coconut. Now, I've got to tell you, we've already tucked into this and it was yummy. I had to save some from you because he would have eaten it all. It was so nice. So, we are in Food Alley, which the lovely Tran, who is our, our host, <laughs> has taken us to, and we're trying Bunja, which is basically uh, grilled pork with 
um, noodles, chili, beautiful greens that you get here in Vietnam. Just fresh, the herbs and everything. So we're gonna give it a go. Okay, so the audience last one. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's beautiful it's broth. It's uh, pork broth. Oh. Yeah, so with this the, is pork yeah. broth. Yeah, with um, fish sauce. With fish sauce and is this uh, green papaya green papaya as well and um we put in a little bit of the chili let's see it the chili and more importantly here come the greens you want to introduce my <laughs> oh yes oh did you get with snails yes oh so um yeah. trying got uh the bun up a bun, a bun yeah. with snail snail noodles yeah. so uh, obviously snails tomatoes um, chicken broth uh, or beef broth, no, uh, pork just broth snail, just snail with the soup the soup yeah but and, uh, the the tomato. liquid the yeah. liquid is the chicken liquid, no nothing just the just, just from the water when they boil the snail oh. and then they will put some some uh, kind of vegetable and then some uh, like um, what kind of Vietnamese vinegar Ah. It has a taste like a, a little bit sour. Which is Why always you, nice. You can try mine. May I? Yeah, sure. I haven't I used this know. yet. <laughs> you want another spoon? Oh, yeah. wow, that's a good. Mm, very fresh. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to try mine now. In I've got to put. We have plenty of uh, plenty kaya noodles, and here just two of them. Mm. Yummy. Okay, I'm going to put some of these greens in here. Yeah. So I've got sprouts, and herbs. This is the banana. Oh. The body of the banana. Oh wow! Oh, there you go. I thought it was onions. It's bananas. I'm serving you or giving you some herbs and greens. You can put a little bit slowly. Don't put too much. Uh, at the same time. Okay. Yeah. That's all you'll get for now. Okay. Bon appetit. Good. So is this a foe? No, it's no. not the. It's a bun cha. Bun cha. So bun is cha pork? Cha is pork. pork. So I do like a bun ga. Bun ga is ga. chicken, right? Uh, bun ga, chicken. Chicken. We have so many. Plenty kind of bun. We have bun ngan. You can see over there is the goose noodle and bun cha here of bun of. Uh, fish oh, noodle, no. so many uh, crab, crab noodle. Bun. So is it crab or the when you say crab noodle? Is kua. it kuo? Bun siu kuo. So many. No night. Uh, is complete without sitting down and having a beer at Beer Street, which is exactly where we are. And we're drinking the local beer, Hanoi. Um, and cheers to you, Chang. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. lady. We were about to finish for the evening when Chang suggested that we go to her favorite coffee spot which interestingly enough is owned by the daughter of the man who came up with the recipe for Hanoi's famous egg coffee. As you can see, it's a bit of an adventure going up to the cafe, but well worth it. It's a very simple cafe, as you can see lovely to see the old memorabilia of Vietnam of the family and what Hanoi used to look like. This is how you make it. Egg yolk, condensed milk, a simple blender and voila, egg coffee.
have no idea how I'm going to sleep tonight. Good morning, day two in Hanoi. We took a grab from our hotel this morning to the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum. Um, we arrived here, it is super busy, it's Sunday morning and the lineup is um, huge so you do need to get here fairly early. The mausoleum opens at 5 a.m. and it closes at 10 p.m. Um, so you do need to be aware of, of that and maybe if you're an early bird come in at um, 5 and if you're a night owl like me um, come in you know late in the evening perhaps it's not so crowded but we're going to walk around and see if we can get a glimpse of it we've gone fully around the block and are now standing in front of Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum mausoleum is built in the brutalism style which I'm sure you'll agree perfectly describes it although Ho Chi Minh wanted to be cremated he was embalmed in the tradition of other communist leaders like Lenin and Stalin We're slowly making our way down to Train Street. One of the nice things about traveling is just getting lost in new cities and discovering new things. It was lovely to see women in their traditional dress. The colors, they're just so very elegant. We obviously came across a flower market. The colors in the dresses just made things spectacular. It was also beautifully fragrant. Of course, we had to stop for another coffee, just in front of one of Hanoi's old gates. Well, we didn't totally get lost. We did make it to Train Street. People come from all over and it is a really Instagrammable space. As you can see, beautiful women, elegantly dressed. And I'm not so much. So we've made it to Train Street. Um, it is just beautiful. It's crazy. It's as, as everybody says. The government has cracked down and apparently you are not allowed to come onto uh, train street and onto the tracks. However, like all good entrepreneurs, all the cafes um, and bars have found a way of getting people onto the street. So basically they come up to the gate and you tell them what you would like, coffee, beer, whatever, and they'll come and es escort you um, to their uh, establishment. So very interesting again okay, still not supposed to be able to come here um, but here we are really looking forward to seeing the train finding out what time the trains come by um, you just need to go online put in train street um, and it will come up with the schedule whether or not the schedule is accurate is another thing there's supposed to be a train at 11:20, so we'll see if it comes along Well, Train Street was an experience. We're now meandering our way through the streets to get to Hanoi Hilton. We are having to sort of make our way through and fight our way with the scooters. Welcome to Hanoi Hilton. Here is a glimpse of what it's like to be a political prisoner. Wow, so we've just come out of Hallow Prison, which was also known as the Hanoi Hilton. Words can express how sobering um, it is to go in there from French colonial rule and political prisoners and how they treated them to American uh, servicemen, um, pilots, 
who were held here during the American slash Vietnam War. Definitely allocate a couple of hours to it. Take the um, audio um, information just to give you um, in-depth information. Just absolutely a must to do, not expensive, 30,000 dong. Um, absolutely, a couple of hours, well worth your time. Our last day in Hanoi, it has been an incredible trip. Um, highlights, Train Street, wow. Um, our walking tour that we did yesterday with Trang um, through the old quarter and with the um, food tour was amazing. We booked that through with locals. Um, we have always had great tours when going through that website and that um, company. Hanoi Hilton, very sobering, an absolute must see. Would I come back to Hanoi? Absolutely. A few things, scooters, um, lawn to themselves. When you're crossing the street, just cross the street, don't stop, don't run, just cross. Sidewalks are for scooter parking, not for sidewalks. My impression of Hanoi is that it is vibrant, a complex history, beautiful culture. I would describe the, the people as being warm, welcoming, sophisticated, classy, um, just some beautiful people would love to come back and visit more Vietnam.